The cheap Multimig 522 MIG Mag welder comes equipped with both a standard torch and a push-pull torch for use with aluminum wires. Here we will talk about how to set up the push-pull torch on the machine. The push-pull torch comes equipped with a 0.9 to 1.2 millimeter diameter graphite plastic liner for use with aluminum wires. The first step of setting up the push-pull torch on the machine is to open the right side panel to prepare for the installation of the torch. Remove the protective plastic cover where the torch installs onto the machine. Take the hardware bag out of the box for the torch and remove the metal sleeve from it. The sleeve in this kit has a straight and a tapered end. If your torch comes equipped in this way and you're going to be using 1.2 millimeter aluminum wires, you need to remove the tapered end out of the tube. Next, we will install the metal sleeve over the plastic liner protruding from the end of the gun. Be sure to have the tensioner released inside the machine and install it into the machine, lining it up correctly, and tightening the plastic thumb wheel to secure it in place. Next, the control cable for the push-pull feeder attaches to the machine at this location. Again, lining up the pins and securing with the plastic retaining ring that screws into the threads coming out of the machine. Before loading the wire into the machine, we need to ensure that the proper size drive roller for the wire being used is installed in the pull feeder in the gun. To do this, loosen the knob here, pull it out, slide the cover forward. Here is where the drive rollers are located. Checking this one, we can read on it that it is a 1.0 millimeter drive roller. We're going to use 1.2 millimeter wire, so we need to change it. To do that, we loosen this nut and remove the drive roller. The nut holding this is a 7 millimeter nut, so using a 7 millimeter socket, we will take this nut off. It is reverse threaded, so we need to remove it in a clockwise direction. Push the small red switch on the torch handle, which releases the pressure on the drive roller, allowing us to remove the roller. Open the hardware bag. Remove the proper size roller for the wire being used. The rollers are marked on the outside with the diameter wire they are intended for use for. Here we can see the 1.2 on this one. So again, we push the small red button on the back side of the torch to release the pressure on the other drive roller. Insert the correct roller and replace the nut. Remembering that it is reverse threaded, so to tighten we will go in the counterclockwise direction. Tighten the nut and we're ready to install the wire. To install the wire spool in the machine, remove the plastic retaining nut from the spindle and install the spool ensuring that the locator pin lines up with one of the holes in the spool. This is extremely important to ensure that you have the proper tension on the wire spool for feeding. Then reinstall the plastic retaining nut. Tightening it all the way down against the face of the spool. To adjust the tension on the wire spool, turn the Allen headed bolt in the center clockwise to tighten, counterclockwise to loosen. Again, we want enough tension so that the spool will still roll freely but when the motor is cut off, it won't roll on its own and put less tension on the wire than is necessary for it to feed properly. To feed the wire into the machine, cut off any crooked or unstraight ends on the wire. Feed it through the plastic liner ahead of the rollers. 
and into the metal tube on the opposite side. The easiest way to feed the softer aluminum wires through the push-pull gun and avoid bird nesting issues is to feed the wire by hand. To do this, we need to straighten the torch cable out, laying it flat, ensuring that there are no kinks or bends in it that would inhibit the smooth feeding of the wire through the liner. Before feeding the wire, we also need to remove the gas nozzle and the contact tip from the end of the torch. Using the Allen key supplied with the kit, you can release the tension on the pole rollers inside the gun to allow feeding the wire through. So here we're going to carefully push the wire through the gun until it reaches the torch. Next, use the small Allen wrench again to back the Allen bolt back off and put pressure back on the drive rollers and the pull feeder. Now we can put the cover plate back on and reinstall our gas nozzle and tip and we're ready to weld.